Oh, look, we found a sorty sword. It's a sorty type of sword. Day 14, month Kozran, year 4710. A strange flash pierces the gloom, and Hel Jiaa feels drops of searing blood run down his chest. The wound healed by Tenerendalav reopens and weeps scarlet, but there is no pain or weakness. A hazy scene appears, a cave chamber. This one, or another one entirely? Hel Jiaa's heartbeat quickens, and a stream of thoughts suddenly bursts into his mind. Thoughts of clearly belong to another. Treachery. They betrayed me, trapped me, and stabbed me in my back. My trusted allies, my treasured friends, the people I swore to protect. The people for whom I descended from heaven and came to this turbulent mortal world. There they are, up ahead, in the gloom of the cave. What are they waiting for? Are they afraid to draw any closer? Do they believe I am about to die from the tra traitorous blows? Next to me, a quiet moan. A girl with a golden braid lies on the rocks, clutching her slashed side. She refused to join with the traitors and paid clearly for it. I could have tried to run, but I will not. Whilst I still have strength, I must. While recognizing the foreign origin of these thoughts, Hale Jia intuits that he can control them somehow. Let's try to heal the wounded girl. A spark of healing magic illuminates the eerie, murky scene before Helja. The wounded girl opens her eyes and whispers, Lariel, you, you said everything was going to change soon. You said you and the other warriors of heaven would be leaving us on a grand mission to stop the demons forever. Is that true? The frenzy of foreign thoughts comes faster and faster, like a rushing river, and images flash by one after another, a priestess in the colorful robes observing the stars, a young female paladin praying, clutching her glowing sword, a majestic golden-winged angel gazing into the distance, his face covered by a helmet, but his voice ringing clear. Only if you're willing, and only if you're ready. There is no going back. Then don't, don't waste your strength healing me, the girl whispers. Your mission is more important. You take care. It is near. There, in the vision, the darkness in the cave stirs into a motion. Something massive appears from within its depths. A vague shadow, an outline. A nightmare come to life, a wave of odious chirruping and rustling emanates from the shadow. The sound piercing, piercing like hot irons, lancing through flesh and bone. The traitors fall to their knees before the shadow, a reverent ecstasy, and the wounded girl thrashes in her death throes. The yawning chest wound burns white hot. Elja's head pounds with pain, and it is no longer clear whose pain it is. The person called Lariel, who sent this vision, or the one unlucky enough to receive it. <clears throat> okay, we're going to go with Will or Knowledge Arcana. Both are ten. I've got more Will, I believe. Uh... Let's go, but Hale Jia is determined to fight off the illusion. Succeed at will check. Nice. The force of the attack, though originating in a vision, is terrifying. 
but hails she as stronger. He shakes off the pain and torpor, but alas, the one who sent the vision cannot claim the same. He is broken and exhausted. A monstrous shadow emerges from the murk of the cave. It is not real. It only exists in the strange vision of memory. But the thrill of fear provokes is more than real. The shadow's features starkly resemble those of Descari, the terrifying demon lord. In moments as swift as, as thought itself, the monster's hand is wrapped around the throat of the one they call Lariel. The foolish angel struggling on the rocks like a fly with its wings torn off intones the shadow. Its voice changes as it moves, shifting from quiet whispering to a sonorous shout, becoming young, then old and quavering. Where is your goddess angel? Where is her self-assured herald? How is it that you are dying here alone, so far from the light of your heaven? A strange calm envelops the thoughts of the one called Laria. He recognizes who stands before him, and he knows he will never bow down before this enemy. The flaming sword flares to life in his hand, bright, pure, flickering with multicolored sparks like a sunbeam through stained glass. Slash! The blade slices through the demonic creature's flesh, and the monster recoils with a howl, releasing his grasp on Lair's throat. The angel falls back heavily on the rocks. His vitality is ebbing, but his pride remains undiminished. He grips the sword and, with his last burst of strength, plunges it into the rock. Helgea senses that the vision is fading, the rush of thoughts diminishing, like a river running dry. The last thing he hears is this. You will kill me, monster. This I know. But one day, someone will come here and raise up my sword. They will raise it up and save and protect the innocent. The vision disappears, vanishing in a burst of colors. Helgea does not fear the final words, but he seems to complete the thought, taking it to heart. The words fly from his lips and with them something else. The heat blazing in Helgea's chest fades away. The edges of the scarlet wound close, leaving not even a scar behind. Looking down, Helgea sees the flaming sword in his hand, or rather, its outline. The memory of what the sword looked like. With a final surge of warm and soothing light, the sword vanishes and the light is drawn into his hand. Helgea senses that it will return. All he need do is call it. All right, that, that was pretty good. I will not lie. Hey, Helgea, are, are you all right? You were kind of glowing just now. Sila kneels before the light, offering him up a prayer to Iomade. Lan looks at you dumbfound. That, that was it. The light of heaven. But how? Wundug frowns. What did you do with it? Where did it go? You saw it too. The, the traitors? The, the dying girl? Lan looks around. It's only us here. You, Gru. You, me, Windu, and the light of heaven. That sort of got um, sucked into you. Any chance you can whip it out again? We kind of need it. 
Lan rubs his chin anxiously. Sorry, I, I crack jokes when I get nervous and, and when I'm upset and when I'm happy. A anyways, what I said, it, it came out wrong. I need to bring you to Chief Saul. You can show everyone the light of heaven. We'll rally the tribe and go into the maze and, and we'll get back our kin. And what if we can't make it happen a second time? What then? The tribe will just say we're crazy and turn its back on us. I think I saw the memories of Lariel, the angel who died here. Lariel? That really was Lariel, the angel from the legends? The ancestors even got his name right on the gravestone. The chief will be thrilled. Windug watches you with suspension. You, thousands of gongs, and no one, no one's been able to touch it. And now you, an ordinary creature of flesh and blood, no different to us, get the sword and start talking about visions. Now, now, Windug, don't don't be a sore loser. Land nods towards, towards you. He's clearly different to us. The sword appears before him, along with the angel's name and all the other stuff, because he doesn't carry our mongrel taint. Heaven doesn't give a damn how special we are. We're born with evil inside us. Heaven doesn't need to know any more than that. I know you're willing to tear anyone apart to uphold our people's honor, but you and Saul, you just refuse to face the truth. We are the way we are are because our ancestors' bodies were corrupted by the abyss. It does the same thing to plants and animals. There's nothing heroic or special about it. It doesn't make us better, and it doesn't make us worthier. Angel Mythic Path. Reveal the light of heaven. It seems I can control it. An Asimir who glows. Makes sense. That is just... Wow. I mean, that's amazing. Heaven has truly blessed you, Hales, yeah? Windog stares at the divine light and is as if transfixed. This power is the most majestic thing I've seen in all my life. Is this what the sun is like, Lan? Yes, it's similar, but the light is more golden. Lan drags his gaze away from it. Chief Saul needs to see this. Now that we have the power of angels on our side, we can't say no. They'll have to assemble a troop to storm the maze. Lan looks at you pleading. You uplanders care about your kids, right? Help us save ours. Without them, we won't survive. And then... The perils of the maze won't be so bad if we go together. We'll make our way through it and find the way to Kinebres. Lead us to your chief and I'll decide if I'm going to help you or not. Yeah, I think we're all going to help, right? It'd be kind of crappy not to help. That's what I'm thinking. It'd be kind of crappy not to help. Didn't we have? Oh, what is that? Well, we got stuff over here. Handful of gems. Okay, I think we had some more dings, didn't we? Yes, we know about skill checks. Wasn't there? Thought there was more. Okay. Well, I thought there was. Yeah, there it is. I knew there was something there. More gems. Okay. So that was all, all of the stuff then? Yes, 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 I'm a, I'm a loot hoe. Leave me alone. I like loots. Wait, wait. Grinding stone and more gems, all right. I think this is gonna be the way out, right? Is this where we're supposed to be going? Well, I thought it was. Well, now I'm not too sure where I'm supposed to be going. I'll go ahead. Well, 
Let's go back down here. Ah. Really, I had to hover. I had to hover over the, the had to hover over the rubble to be able to get over it. Most of the game is mechanics are based on the rule set of the tabletop RPG Pathfinder, which uses dice for determining outcomes of various actions. The most commonly used die has twenty sides. It's the die you roll during and skill checks. So, there you go, Tritus. If I would have done the tab a long time ago, I would have found that, wouldn't I? That's what you're saying. Okay. Okay. So. Well. The path is clear. They will break against our resolve. Okay. Okay. Well, okay, move for there. Fire. Okay. Right there, and got that. Okay. One, get that set out. Go attack. The spirits demand your blood. Okay. Okay. I'll cut you wide open. All right. Hold on a second. Okay, it looks like uh, I changed what I moved. I need to now. Okay. Go for their hearts. You are today's sacrifice. All right. How do I really standard action move action? Okay. Now what I've done is I got myself because I switched weapons. Now I'm I'm stuck on a endure this. Okay. So we're all done. We're combat. All right, that's good. Okay, now the plan is to get to the next place. Oh, wow, now we get more stuff. All right, so. Could we step on their toes as well? Every attack during combat entails the following. Yes. Okay. 
Who's up? You won't survive me. I'll rip you apart! Okay, that's a mess, that's a mess. I'm gonna just concentrate over here. All right. Okay. Okay, so the light take you. The inheritor guide my blade. Well, now I just need, I want to skip past you. I was a fuck to do do to do. Yes, yes, it's ninety nine dollars to give, be given a key. So, so now, no glory without risk. Okay, we're gonna do this. Take it off. Okay. They'll beg me to stop. Okay. All right, so we got this over here. Collect all that. Mobility. Oh, wow. Yeah, $99 to get a uh, early access key. And then you can play the game. Did we find trouble? Yes, we Maybe. always find trouble. Okay. Attack! I'll rip you apart! Go! A solid plan! Okay, there we go. Yeah, I wanted her to do cure light wounds. There. Alright. Uh, she no longer has cure light wounds. Okay. So, we'll have to give you Use. She needs a little health. Just in case. Just in case. We need a little more health. Just in case. I found something. So. Yep, 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 yep.
Alright. Yeah, that was easy. Crossbow, fine feather, gold coins. All right. All right. Let's get everybody going. Got to get to the village. It's about uh, it's about that time. I want to thank everybody for uh, watching this evening. I watched. Yes, let's concentrate on him. Let's go. Okay. Ooh, a comma. That's interesting. Pearl. Masterwork greatsword. Might have to... Get our fighter to be a two-hander. Seems like a good seems like a good weapon right there. All right. All right. I think I'm gonna save it here for now. Oh. One dude glances at Lan, who is fixing his slipped bowstring, and quickly walks over to you. Her cat-like eyes glow from beneath her hood. Listen here. I don't know who you are or where you come from, but you and I are the only two people here who see things clearly. That's why I'm asking you, don't show the light of heaven to Saul. Well, that seems a little backwards. Uh, don't you want to save the kids in the lost mice? I do want to, but I'm not going to risk the future of the tribe for the sake of a few stupid kids. Chief Sol is hesitant and for good reason. He also understands how dangerous this is for the tribe. Lan's the only one who benefits from these childish games of her heroism. I'll go alone if I have to and find them. So whatever's left of them, without any heroics, relying only on myself, risking only my own life, Wendek slows... You and your friends, you can come with me. Perhaps we can make it to the end of the maze together and find the way out. Uh, Lan is sure. I thought you would see. I'll think about it. Let's go. Don't show the chief the light. I'll lead you through the maze to the service. I swear it. Does anyone else get the feeling that she's, that she's being a little bit, um, I don't know, untrue? Okay. What I'm going to do is I am going to save the game there. And I'm going to call it a night, but I will going to be back. Uh, hopefully you guys followed, so you'll know I'll be back. And uh, I hope to see you next time. I want to thank uh, Launchpad uh, for all his questions and talking through it. It was great. And all the other people that uh, showed up. It was great. It was fun. Remember, peace, love, and all that jazz, and be good to one another. Thanks for watching.